Hello everybody, I'm Simone Azzelio, a master's student in physics of complex system at the University of Turin, co-founder of Machine Learning Journal Club, a student nonprofit research organization, and a visiting student researcher at the University of Ottawa in Canada. And today I'm going to talk to you about physics in for machine learning simulator for wildfire propagation. So recently, wildfires uh, have been increasingly growing in frequency and intensity, becoming a serious threat for living beings and socioeconomic stability all over the world. So both Australia and California suffer from the most se severe wildfire seasons recorded in modern history. So with this premise, what is our goal here? In such worrisome scenarios, we'd like to have a fast and accurate wildfire spread simulators that can run iteratively in order to evaluate several containment strategies. The current state of the art from computational physics is worth weather research and forecasting, which is basically able to produce accurate prediction, but stop each simulation takes several hours which is acceptable for a single run, but not for our needs. So in order to reach our goal, we are proposing uh, scientific machine learning techniques, which have several advantages. And the three main advantages are the, the following. So um, there's the possibility to obtain a continuous solution for this problem instead of a, of a discretized one on a grid, uh, and the possibility to forecast the evolution outside the limits of the simulation domain and also the possibility to reconstruct the evolution back in time which is pretty useful for forensic analysis so the major advances in machine learning in the re recent years were due to encoding more structure into some model where more structure basically means faster and better fits from less data so in science, you might ask, what is the structure uh, that we are dealing with? And basically we have heterogeneous scientific data uh, is encoded in the structure of scientific models. So we have differential equations which describe a mechanism or structure and let the equations naturally evolve from this description. Here's a um, differential equation system. And um, on the other side, in machine learning, we can specify a learnable black box where with the right parameter, uh, we can actually fit any nonlinear function. Which one is better? Well, I would say neither, but both have strengths and weaknesses, but we, we can mix up the two and actually get something very useful. So we can add a scientific structure to machine learning and the output is physics informed neural networks. Uh, where instead of training a neural network directly on data, we usually employ a shallow feedforward neural network as an efficient approximator of trajectories in the solution space. And this approach leads to numerous advantages, but um, the most important might be uh, the one uh, which let us avoid the curse of dimensionality. So it can be proven that uh, physics informed neural network ha have a polynomial bound in a um, uh, in complexity, uh, which is uh, pretty hard to understand here, but it actually works pretty well for uh, high uh, dimensional spaces since uh, numerical integrators would have um, uh, an exponential grow uh, with respect to that. So um, I would introduce a basic mathematical um, um, structure behind uh, the wildfire models. So um, there's a bunch of PDE, but the, the most important one would be the level set equation. So the model um, start with this function, which is called the level set function. Uh, we can uh, specify out, out from it the burning area at time t and even the fire line, which is basically the boundary of the burning region. And the model starts from a um, semi-empirical approach uh, where it, it finds out the um, fire spread S uh, from this formula, which is the rotermal formula, where R0 is the spread rate in the absence of wind, and there are the, uh, wind factors and slope factors which are related to the specific uh, stru structure of the terrain. And uh, 
so the last ingredient is uh, this uh, PDE, this partial differential equation, which is called the level set. And this is what the one that we have tackled with, with this physics informed neural network. So we have replaced numerical solvers from the WARF package with a completely different approach by employing uh, two um, Julia packages, namely neural PDE and DFAQ flux. Here there's some references if you're curious about it. And what we get out from that is this particular architecture, which can be summarized in the, by the following steps. So let's put ourselves in the most general case when where we want to find M plus one target functions, U, uh, which satisfy a system of PDEs uh, with these initial conditions and boundary conditions, we first construct a surrogate function by employing a neural network with um, n, n plus one inputs and the parameters theta. And since a neural network is mathematically a composite function, the derivatives of u with respect to its inputs can be evaluated by applying the chain rule for differentiating uh, compositions of functions. And we can easily do that by employing automatic differentiation. So after that, we would need to define a loss functions, which is the core of this model actually, to calculate the discrepancy between uh, the surrogate uh, function and uh, um, the, the, um, the solution of the system. And this is where we force our network to satisfy the physics imposed by PDE. So the last function would, would be made up by two different pieces. Uh, one which uh, minimize the L2 norm referred to the PDE and the latter one which minimizes the L2 norm between boundary conditions and the solution evaluated at the boundary. Um, in uh, we've been modeling uh, this fire spread in a very very uh, easy case, simple case where we have only one ignition point, and uh, we have the the following technical specs. So uh, I would focus just very very briefly on the fact that our neural network is very shallow. So we only have one hidden layer with sixteen neurons. And the training time, it's on the order of 10 minutes. So it's much more faster than the um, numerical integrators from WORF. And uh, as you can see here, uh, the, um, the WORF model, so the numerical one is the red one and our model is the blue one. It's pretty much superimposed on the other one and they also grow in time at the same rate and we've been employing the Ausdorf distance to calculate the differences between the two. And what we get is actually the, uh, well, the, the, the area, so the, the surface that we've been uh, calculating the difference of, between the two surfaces is uh, going down in time, it's converging, and also the time evolution of the areas. Uh, well, the pin is pretty much uh, continuous and straightforward, and, and they also uh, do not diverge in time. So here you can see the counter time evolution and um, the, the, the physics informed neural networks, it's pretty much uh, very similar to the other one in this case. So as the conclusion to this work, I would uh, put down a brief list of the main advantages. So we had a significant speed up instead of uh, the order of four to five out to six hours, the training time took only 10 minutes and the evaluation was pretty much immediate. Uh, the neural networks can also uh, be used uh, to predict solution outside of the training domain, as I said before. And also it, it is possible to interpolate our solution on a continuous mesh, mesh, which is very different from the numerical solutions which are discretized. And also changing the equation, uh, which we, we have modeled in this case, the level set equation is very easy and straightforward. You just need to rewrite two lines of code. So Julia has this very high level 
uh, structure that lets you do that. And also, we don't have a very high um, number of degrees of freedom. And in particular, this architecture doesn't need a very um, deep neural network. And also, uh, this, this would lead to more interpretability, of course. And the other, the other very important and last advantage is the fact that physics informed neural network can be used for data driven purposes. So, to extract new, uh, new components out of um, some theoretical models, also in this case, to uh, provide a tool which can refine theoretical models as well. And I would like to thank our sponsor and uh, specifically also the University of Toronto and the Project X, which, are the, um, which is the competition where we've been taking part in with this project. And you can find some more about it on, in, on archive. This is the name of our paper. I would like to thank all my uh, co-authors and especially the guys which have been working on this SciML paradigm, paradigm with me. And uh, here is the GitHub page. So thank you for your attention.